Welcome to this journey where we dialogue with thought and heart leaders to share their reflections on human condition and how to improve them. Today we have with us Dr. Anirban Bandopadhyay. Dr. Anirban is a senior scientist in the National Institute of Material Sciences, Japan. Dr. Anirban has developed a resonance chain based complete human brain model that is fundamentally different from Turing chain. His work involves experiments on DNA proteins, microtubules, neurons, molecular machines and cancer. Welcome Anirbanda for this episode the special episode of COVID-19 and beyond. Uh, <laughs> special times call for special efforts, special insights maybe or yeah. probably a d- deeper reflection. So let's see if we can deep dive and come up with something very interesting for both of us and for people who are going to be watching this. Mm-hmm. So I want to begin with something that I read just this morning. Uh, there's this uh, organization called Edge uh, mm. by John Rockman. And he sent out a mailer today where he quoted Dyson, Freeman Dyson. Uh, okay. Apparently in 2007, Freeman wrote a provocative essay in the New York Review of Book. Uh, and it was, uh, it was funnily titled or coincidentally titled our biotech future okay. and I'll just read out the first paragraph of that and then probably take your perspective of it um, it says biology is now bigger than physics as measured by the size of budgets by the size of workforce and by the output of major discoveries and biology is likely to remain the biggest part of science through the 21st century biology is also more important than physics because it's measured by its economic consequences, its eth- ethical implication, or the effect on human welfare. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts around it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, definitely, definitely, it was the case, and it it should be the case because biology is the front end of life, and then you need to support it. And then physics is always we know that biological systems, their functions, you explain with chemical reactions. And then when you cannot explain everything with the, the chemical and other kind of um, um, processes, then you try to find out some physical laws or physical interactions or physical forces into it. So definitely um, physics get uh, uh, less um, uh, importance than biology because biology, whatever you do, whatever you build, it directly applies to the the human life form to the development of life form whereas physics um, is kind of a um, little hierarchical and then you need uh, many years uh, to find a lot of lot of lot of biological data to find out a physical principle that would be uh, at the bottom and then evolving many biological phenomena so definitely i mean it is the reality and then it is also understandable why it is happening so, Anirbanda, just to, you know, I was trying to wrap my head around at a very fundamental level around what's happening. And, yeah. uh, you know, you can you can help me do that. So, in my simple understanding, <clears throat> I'm seeing that, uh, let's say there are life forms. There are different life forms. <clears throat> and those life forms, uh, let's imagine, I mean, I, I would imagine that, let's say, human life form, and then there is this virus life form. And both these life form uh, are coming in contact in some way, and they're competing for some form of reproduction, some pa- some form of survival. At the very basic level, this is what I understand. Uh, so, competition <coughs> and collaboration is 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 an inbuilt feature of life form. Uh, is is how I see it. Uh, also, because let's say if I look at the human biome, we, it, it is said that only 10% of the cells are humans and the rest are bacteria colonies or different kind of colonies. I don't know to what extent the theory holds water. Uh, how would you respond to this whole hypothesis of life forms competing for their reproduction, their survival? Yeah, so basically we have to understand what is uh, virus. So virus is a um, uh, 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 is a complex of proteins and then uh, inside it either it could have a DNA that is um, a double helical structure or it could have RNA. So two types of viruses are there. But the point is that uh, since it does not have any nuclear mitochondria or, or centrosome or other things, uh, uh, by any means it cannot, it cannot uh, do 
uh, cell division. So that's that it. That's its problem. So it has come up. The a virus has come up with a with a unique idea that it will go uh, inter. Human cells can can divide. It can have cell division. So um, so it goes to the membrane. Then uh, the the cell membrane or the cell uh, the cell living cell of your body have some receptor. It is called. And the virus also the corona type of virus. The corona virus is now very very famous. So corona name came from sunlight uh, radiates. So that is kind of a corona. So from there that the name came. So it has kind of uh, this kind of virus structures have some kind of spikes all around, and that actually binds to the receptor. So when it binds to the receptor, the cell feels that some friend has come. So it opens the door. So by phagocytosis or other kind of processes. The virus enters into the into the cell. After entering into the cell, it goes to the to the ribosome. Ribosome is the place where protein we we our cells synthesize proteins. So it goes to the ribosome and then it releases its um, RNA or DNA. In this case, since coronavirus is RNA, let's concentrate on RNA. So RNA goes there, and then ribosome is just like a TikTok typewriter machine, and then the RNA enters and then goes through. And then protein is produced, synthesized. Boom, 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 boom. So the ribosome of your cell start synthesizing the proteins of that particular virus. Then what happens that also the uh, the RNA RNA gets gets replicated, and then you get the RNA, the protein complex, and the new virus forms. In this way, in your living cell, many many viruses forms, and then the cell bursts. So cell considered your virus as framed, and then when it enters, then goes there. Now at this point, uh, and then that uh, that virus can kill you, that can do wonderful things, uh, and then your antibody is um, produced, and then they try to they try to grab those uh, those viruses, and then form a complex, and then move it out, or or or, or many many different things form. So th there is a fighting begins between your body and others, but. Never ever your body is your cells can recognize that it is a virus. So I will not allow it to enter because the virus, it's all with all its intelligence, it changes the corona, the spike, to match with the receptor. Why this corona virus is so dangerous is because uh, during the evolution process, Corona was actually um, some people did uh, did some work uh, to to understand the genomic uh, structures, and then you can do similarity. It's called NCBI NC, NCBI virus data. So so metadata of sequences you can go. People have already uploaded it. It's free. You can go and you can check, and then you can you can compare uh, with the um, with the different kind of viruses, and then you can find that the bat virus that they have coronavirus that attacks. Um, uh, the respiratory systems of the bat, that one is kind of a very similar. I mean, it's very, very similar to the current coronavirus that we have. So, so definitely its origin is bad. So basically what, what was happening is that um, the virus was attacking bat to bat, bat to bat, and during this course, uh, somehow um, some people ate the bat meat and then the virus was there living. So basically if it is a protein, it's a protein structure, then if you boil it in water, then the protein gets cooked, cooked, just like you take a piece of chicken meat or mutton meat, and then you um, you boil it, and then water inside uh, uh, goes inside the protein structures, proteins destroyed, and it gets cooked. So if that happens, then with a high temperature, the the virus will also get uh, get cooked or get get destroyed. But if if it is raw meat or not cooked properly. Then what happens? Some of the raw viruses enters into the body, and then <coughs> because of its natural properties, what it does is goes to the goes to your human cell, and then try to get the get to the receptors, and then try to make fool your living cells, your cells, and then try to enter, and then fails. And many many times when it happens, then it modifies its structure during the process of evolution, and then learns how to fool your cell and go inside. So when the practice of bat meat eating would increase continuously, then bat disease would get uh, into the human body. And then slowly, slowly over time, by many trial and error methods, those coronaviruses would change the conformation of the, of the spike.
that will bond to the receptor. Now, why coronavirus is dangerous? Because it has learned to uh, to mm, modify the spike conformations such that it can bind with many types of cell in the human body. And that is why your body widely receives. For an example, suppose I'm a virus and I have modified my uh, spike to bind with the cell, with a particular type of cell of your body. Unless I, I can go to your skin, I can remain there. But I will not be able to do any harm to you. I will not be able to prove it because skin cells, top part of the skin cells are dead. Always remember, that's why we have insects and then um, small, small termites on our body all over. If I take a high resolution microscope and look at your skin cells, it will be dead cells. And then uh, there will be a lot of uh, um, uh, um, microscopic life forms, those who are eating, they live there all over the body. Even if you are... Uh, 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 Hema Malini or, <laughs> or Aishwarya Rai, doesn't, doesn't matter. I mean, you have it. But, uh, anyway, so the uh, skin cells are dead. So if, if virus falls over there, it doesn't matter. But if you, if you do like this, rub it, and then you are exposed, then it can go there. Because dead cells remove and then go there. But if the skin cells, the receptors of the virus doesn't match, then it cannot then it can it has to enter through your nose through your eyes eyes i think uh, wearing uh, spectacles and uh, specs I, I think it's very good because it doesn't go and then mouth so if you protect these three it's very un unlikely so rare kind of viruses would, would pass through your body and then go to the desired cell so you have to go to a desired cell but what if you increase the bandwidth coronavirus has increased the bandwidth so that means i can I can uh, bind with that kind of cell receptors, that kind of cell receptor, that kind of that. So what happens is very vulnerable, many, many types. So, so virus remains same. It changes only the receptors thing. And then it becomes, because what are the symptoms you have is just like flu. Many of the people are recovering and then coming back. What is different is the receptor. So receptor confirmation, I was looking at the structure from the PDB database. In the PDB database, this, this virus is actually SARS-CoV-2. Uh, this is actually the name and SARS comes from severe acute respiratory syndrome, severe acute respiratory syndrome. So it came in the, in the 2010, 2011. I mean, it's, it's going on. It's, it's evolving time and time and time and again. And what is happening is when you have other animals, they practice with other animals and then other animals and you eat their, your, their meat, then you allow them to adapt with the human body. Right. Learn but so that's extremely dangerous practice carried out in in China, and then uh, that you can you can artificially build it in lab also. But you will take the animal, practice it, practice it, and with human, practice it, practice it. So nobody knows the. Please understand. Nobody knows the actual conformational engineering of evolution of proteins. We don't understand it because if we understood, we can find the drugs of any any disease in instantly, immediately. What happens is you take an animal, you take you practice it there, and then take it to the human, practice it over there, and this can um, how can so this is what is happening. Yeah. So Anirbandha, I think uh, it's fantastic. You actually covered so many uh, brilliant uh, uh, you know topics in this. There was there was the origins of it. Uh, there was the transmission of it. There was the structure, the strategy of this life form, this virus, and why this life form is is making humans susceptible uh, through the friendly strategies, maybe, and the and the bandwidth that they have created to be able to uh, uh, to to tie into any receptors of of, of mm. human you know different cells that human have. These yeah. are fantastic. And then you then you also moved on to saying that that at the at the core of all of this is the protein structure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the core of the entire thing is a protein strategy, a, stru a, a strategy. So, can you just please also explain? Um, so, let's say, let's say, if I were to now now ask another question based on what you just said, life form. I'm just trying to now go to the level of protein forms. And are we then saying that proteins have? A, so, be it, there are different strategies because humans also have uh, 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 its own protein structure. Uh, What's, what are the features of these protein structures that, that they compete with each other? In the sense, what is protein in the first place? There is no, there is no competition. Uh, the compete, compete word, you have to forget. Because virus's strategy is to become friendly to your cells. 
So to tell you that I am your friend, just like just like somebody goes to your comes to your home and then tells, look, I am your friend. I want to be in your room. And then he enters inside your room and then he says, look, I need a little space. I want to do uh, some dancing in your house. And then you are like, okay, okay, you can dance. And then he starts dancing all over your house. And then you find that you have no space left. And then uh, this is the kind of a situation. So here there is no competition. So how a protein or receptors bind with each other, these are the very simple organic chemistry thing. Uh, uh, it's just, uh, they call it lock and key arrangement. So you have, uh, um, you have acceptor and you have a donor. So you it could be charge based, it's a positively charged, um, negatively charged, or it could be a cavity. And then you have another molecule goes there due to weak interaction or hydrogen or dipole dipole interaction or hydrogen bonding could be. But once the receptor attaches there, uh, the bonding is done, then the virus is allowed to do the phagocytosis or other process by which it ruptures the membrane, cell membrane and goes inside. Once it goes inside, it releases the, the protein. It doesn't release, I mean, it is not intelligent life form. What happens is inside the cell, PAH, the, the proteins, uh, protein capsids or the capsid that it is created by different complex molecular structures that goes out and the RNA comes in. And then the RNA starts floating in the cyplo cytoplasm cell fluid and then it goes to the ribosome. So ribosome don't know, it is also not an intelligent system. So this is a friendly approach. You have to understand, it's just a guest who came come to your house for uh, for for this, so no competition. Yeah. Maybe let me rephrase, and I I buy into what you say. The rephrase is: there is this life form, and there is this life form. There are two life forms, and I'm not saying you know human or virus. And these life form need certain environment to live, to sustain, to continue their life, and then also reproduce. Uh, uh, and as you rightly pointed out, when they want to live they come together now if they form a symbiotic relationship they could continue to live for a longer time but if, if it becomes feeding off the other and the other's fitness goes down then obviously there would come a time when when the host dies and then this form also dies um, and in that sense I'm saying uh, competition but we can we can park that particular thing uh, for uh, uh, as rightly advised by you um, sorry you had something to say yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that uh, uh, for this particular moment, I think that um, uh, we should, uh, we should, uh, we should, we should think that uh, um, uh, about our terminologies. Actually, uh, it's a very clear, clear-cut understanding that we have um, a very small, uh, if if a small amount of uh, coronavirus goes to your body, and then your body will figure out the antibodies. So when coronavirus is spreading all over the world, be prepared that the time for coronavirus, it may, it may give bad time to the human, human race or humanity, but antibodies are getting produced. So the, even, even the, even the um, coronavirus is evolving because the receptor cells and their conf confirmations for different, uh, different um, nations, different kind of people, different ethnicity, different food habit have different kind of thing. Distance is not everywhere identical. All humans are not identical. Different races, different food habits, different different uh, things. Uh, confirmations could be could be different. So um, uh, so coronavirus is adapting and then and then moving and and changing. But many many thousands and thousands of people are getting the acquiring the ability to to fight with it. So antibodies are being prepared. So uh, so. Next time, uh, when uh, COVID will come, then it has to come up with, an, with some new ideas. But this is the first time in the history of mankind we see a, truly a pandem pandemic when really, really you don't have. And it's, it's panicking also because when you hear the stories that a person goes for, a, for an example, what happened in Bengal, the, 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 the Joint Secretary went to meet the Home Secretary and then the uh, they meet uh, outside the table face to face. I mean, very minor contact, very short period of time. And then the other person gets the coronavirus in infection. So, so that's panicking because you are not making that much contact with the, with the, with the person. And still, 
uh, the virus go i mean passes from one body to another so definitely definitely um, uh, there will be panic among the people but um, as you have seen already it is it is proven that um, many people nothing is hap- nothing nothing is happening to them they are just the carriers they are they are giving it to other weaker 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 people so um, so this is a beautiful um, uh, life cycle that is being um, being generated so the so don't don't think that the uh, coronavirus in us is identical so it is evolving over there it's evolving everywhere it's, it it encounters completely different kind of life form in india completely different kind of cellular um, uh, receptor conformers so it's not absolutely identical so are we are we then saying are we then saying and it's a, it's a brilliant point that you raised that uh, as much as humans uh, body different human body has different ecosystem and similarly there is this virus who's also learning uh, you know while they've learned a lot of strategies but they're also learning on the go depending on the environment and mm. the, and the stuff so uh, are we then saying that no single uh, vaccine or no single or maybe maybe the vaccine has to be too complex or too um, you know what is vaccine vaccine is basically um uh basically uh, giving it um, so basically what happens is vaccine is a small strain of that virus so few virus should would be tail- sent to your body but you can you can get a virulent attack what they do they look at the genes look at the dna and then modify some of the things so that it goes to your body it triggers the antibody formation but it does not allow too much application and other things so uh, so basically it takes time to do vaccine preparation because you want to be sure that when you make small uh, strain of that um, of that virus uh, pure form of uh, those virus in a, in a small small beaker that is the strain and then when you when you when you send that you make sure that it does not start um, replicating many many and hijacking the cell uh, reproduction system the ribosome ribosomes of the of the of the cells so so that's why that's why it takes time but i would like to look at i would like to request all of you those who are listening to this uh, to this interview is to look at the data when it comes to a particular country it takes time and the time the zero phase time how it will go it is it is beautiful it is it is not identical exponential it stays See, every yeah, yeah it it is very different it is zero but after a certain time it goes up and this zero and also when it grows there are three different kind of linear plots we are getting with three different slopes uh, like the japan is doubling in 10 days some other countries are doubling spain and the italy is are doubling very very rapidly yeah. and iran so so you can see that the different part very completely three different kind of human <laughs> resistance to this um, coronavirus and in india in india you see the uh, the situation in india people who are quarantined with positive coronavirus all over india this is happening i mean yesterday there was a case from kerala one person positive in coronavirus fled to were fleeing to assam 3000 km away and then all the way he came contact of hundreds if not thousands of people in that sense india would have already into gone into pandemic 3000 more than 3000 people have fled in punjab in in kerala so many so many instances in 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 bengal this guy comes from london so initia- we have all the data in india Uh, nearly 200 people are now at this moment of time when the video is being recorded on 20th of march uh, to the 2020 at this moment we have nearly 195 people infected out of 195 25 or uh, nearly 30 people are directly foreigners who 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 came from abroad who are foreign nationals and so we can say roughly 150 people who have been detected officially um uh, um uh, 150 170 70 people so they all of them all of them are have come from abroad the community interaction is enormous so the so the guy came from london he was uh, where my flat is near to my flat in calcutta he he moved all over because his her uh, his mother was a joint secretary she used her power to take her, him out of the quarantine 
see, this is a crime and punishable should be he sh she should be hanged <laughs> you know but but what she did is she took out her son and then her son went on in many many clubs and then everywhere and went on spreading viruses so the point is no evidence as of yet so uh, center for um, um i mean i mean uh, the biological research uh, uh, i think i think um, um, uh, in in delhi they took uh, um, they are taking every day multiple samples of flu from for india to, to check if it is um, from community community uh, infection community infection means a person who comes directly from from abroad and then lives in a home if the home members are affected it's fine they they call it direct direct contact but if a person is found with coronavirus whose foreign trace is unfound that means by second third fourth generation of connection he got it then we call it community uh, that is the stage 3 of coronavirus evolution so the coronavirus evolution has four stages as you know one is coming from abroad and then near locality that is stage 2 that is happening in india and then stage 3 where you cannot trace the origin where it comes from so so that is the community so that is the third page when it goes exponentially but that exponential increase also for uh, japan like <laughs> hmm. there is india like of course and then japan like and then um, um you see iran iraq like or then other european countries many many are uh, at the top so there are nearly three or different four four different uh, ways of evolution so that, that when when that begins um, uh, nothing uh, could be done so i think what 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 you helped us understand is uh, on one side there is the mutation of the there is a mutation of the learning system that this virus would be having uh, yeah. and and the way it is trying to pan out and the other thing is how it is spreading how it is spreading from human to human and you know yeah. what, what, what are the different scales at which it can uh, and most of the countries have eventually shown an exponential curve. They have exponential, exponential, curve. Car, exponential curve is kind of uh, the uh, uh, exponential curve. I would not say I'm seeing the three or four different things, four different slopes of increment. So already uh, we can say India uh, at the bottom, and then the Japan, like Japan, Korea, or, or I would say even even China, also something like. And then, and then, and then Italy, and then Iran, and Spain, uh, on, uh, and then, um, of course, in the middle, you have to keep uh, <laughs> the Scandinavian countries, and then uh, 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 Czech Republic, African countries, and many other, many, 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 many. Most of the countries are actually below. Spain and Italy um, are showing uh, um, a great, ag extremely aggressive um, attack of of coronavirus. Mm. So if we were to just step back uh, from what, what you've discussed, Anil Banda, there are two, mm. two larger uh, areas of conversation from here on. One is, mm. one is what are the questions that, that are engrossing you now uh, when you look at this particular thing? What are the questions that you're asking or, or rather what is, the, what is it that you are doing as far as this pandemic is concerned? That's number yeah. one. Yeah. So basically, I have gone to the PDB website and I have downloaded the, 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 the protein structures. And I'm trying to understand because my background research is protein, so I'm 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 trying to understand the uh, the different protein structures that are that are that are there, and then I'm trying to uh, trying to understand it as uh, <laughs> as much as possible, and then I could see that six W O one C O V two SARS C O V two is uploaded, and I could download and I could see the um, uh, see the see the structures. Basically, I'm trying to understand. Um, uh, the the different uh, uh, different levels of um, uh, uh, different uh, different re receptors changing on the receptor because of course they made a crystal of it and then they solved the crystals. I, I understand that because now nowadays you know you can solve protein crystals very fast. So can you, can so, you explain what exactly is this for a lot of people who would not understand it? Oh, okay. Yeah. So basically, you you get the strain of uh, of the of the coronavirus protein, and immediately you take out the um, you you just you can dissolve it. You can get the proteins. You crystallize it, and then you can solve. So um, by two thousand nine, two thousand ten, we got a technology by which we can very rapidly 
uh, rapidly solve the crystal structures of, of proteins. Earlier, it was a huge time. So there was a time in 95, 96, um, uh, when um, people used to crystallize a protein and then publish one paper. And then <laughs> it was a great thing and used to publish in a big, big journal. And then later, by 2010, you know, it became very, very easy. So right now, within three months, you see the result is out. At least three or four different kind of structures I can I could download. So I'm looking at that. And I'm also trying to understand the, the, the human receptors bonding and then other things. Because I feel... The mystery of coronavirus is hidden in the mm, in the bonding in the bonding part so receptors so is there food habit is controlling the receptors of uh, living uh, human cells and that's why we are seeing four different kind of growth processes all over the globe globe for the coronavirus so my my uh, one of my uh, uh, hypothesis what is what is going on is is here is in the past uh, the basic thing that uh, uh, coronavirus size is 120 nanometer. A dust particle, a dust particle is mm, uh, 500 nanometers to mm, uh, something like that, or or something like that. So a small dust particle or the or the pollutant pollutants uh, 500 nanometers, 600 nanometers. So what happens is, if there is moisture in the air, so the it can bond with the moisture. It can it can dissolve in the moisture and it can it can survive. So if there is a moisture condition. In your environment, you are very vulnerable even by the wind to pack it and when you take when you breathe, it goes there. We have to come up with some model so that we can explain the extraordinary, extraordinary uh, in, 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 in infection rate uh, that is happening. So that is one of my, my concern I'm looking into uh, because I looked into it and then I came up with an idea that if you have a soap, if you have a soap and you wash your hands or wash your mouth uh, many times a day, you have very less probability to get infected. Of course, you should not go outside because now if there is a moisture in the air, it will go because 125 nanometer is 120 to 125 nanometer is the size. So, so that, that is that is one thing. And then I'm looking into uh, into first to understand the mystery of receptors because I'm I think I strongly believe as I posted in 2011 in my Facebook that because of the in a food pyramid, um, virus and humans, uh, humans start, virus attack everywhere in the pyramid. So when we were in the school days, in our textbook, uh, uh, in our secondary exam, you know, one question came, uh, a question used to come, where do you put virus in the food pyramid? We used to answer everywhere. There is no special place for virus. But, but it came to my mind in 2011 that look, virus is everywhere but humans are also changing their food habit and eating everything and going everywhere so what happens is if you delete everything with just a philosophical argument you can find that humans are also behaving just like the virus are behaving so mm -hmm. attack all others all others in the food pyramid try to reduce their number they are they are they are they're corrupting the whole food pyramid that is naturally existing in the planet so we are producing many, 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 many chickens. We are producing many, 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 many goats or many, 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 many beefs to, to, to eat or pork to, to eat them. So we are changing the balance because of our, our need, not what is naturally allowed, what should be naturally allowed in the modified environment of the planet. So what are we are doing? We are doing this. So that means there, there, there will be a time when we, we are everywhere in the food pyramid, we changed ourselves. Now they'll be a fight with the virus. So that was kind of a very, a very vague, very broad speculation. Going by that, coronavirus is not the end. Coronavirus has learned to bond with many, many different kinds of cells. I know uh, many dangerous animal viruses which are there. Like one cow virus is there which rottens the entire body. In a few hours, whole body gets rotten and then die. If that that is called rotten disease of cows. And my beloved cow actually died by that disease. I know that. So if that converts, a human in front of your eyes within a few hours will get rotten and then die. So these kind of things happen even if nobody do it intentionally. So if, if you eat that meat, that can happen. So I gave one example, but there could be hundreds of examples like this. So we have to be very, very careful what kind of evolution process is happening all over the world. We cannot say that you are living in China, so you are allowed to eat anything. 
and you can you can you know, uh, trigger the evolution process we have to look into we have to make a catalog of all these dangerous um, things and we have to avoid uh, evolution process for them and another thing which i think is very very dangerous which coronavirus giving a message that i could be friendly to many many cells i can change my my spike or the corona the spike uh, with which i bond with your cell the receptor if if i they can find out trigger out some universal way to bond with any kind of cells then that will be dangerous because then it will be extremely rapid and then the size it has almost optimized 120 nanometers so basically it can it, it could be moisture born brown i mean just like your pollutants move in the air they will also move so these kind of uh, things are kind of my concern i just want to find out that how could how could uh, different cell receptors it is managed to attack different cell receptors how how i mean to me my understanding from the protein structures or protein uh, studies that i have carried out for my my research it's very difficult to to lock and key with one kind of thing and then lock and key with other kind of uh, receptors and other kind of to my understanding of uh, chemistry and then supramolecular chemistry i have to discuss with uh, with very good chemists who are professional chemists because i'm a physicist but i'm 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 i'm, I'm zooming down my problems that uh, my questions uh, on which i would i would think in the coming days for an example very interesting is the case four different kind of growth process in four different kind of races so depending on food of it and then culture and other things definitely definitely it it can it cannot go through it cannot pass through so there is a there is something related to the the culture and food habit we have to we have to we have to look into the data much more details but so far whatever the statistical data available the plots are available it is there so it is starting in a very different kind of mathematical rules are being followed for different different countries so that's kind of a kind of a situation is over there and then what whether it is related to food habit it is related to other kind of things we have to do it but the answer will come from the receptors structural receptors and lock and key arrangement how it is bonding so that mm, those are the kind of problems i am i'm thinking into and of course i am thinking how to how to get rid of this problem and i think that uh, yesterday narendra modi gave a gave a um, uh, gave a lecture what to do for india and then when he said that he wants to shut down whole country nobody will get out on this sunday march 22 i think that is a brilliant idea extremely good idea if you can shut down whole country for one day or two days or three days at last many many places the airborne things would get neutralized so uh, the virulent rise will be uh, marginalized so i think that um, uh, it didn't came to my mind <laughs> though i know the data though i know the thing that if you can shut down nobody will be outside for one day in india everywhere total shut down everything closed one day they he has asked for morning to night 14 hours basically his idea is saturday night everybody is home sleeping <laughs> sunday whole day and then sunday night so basically there is a window of nearly uh, 35 to 40 hours which you are giving uh, you are not allowing it to spread so many of the viruses which did which are in contact i mean on the surface contact and something they would die out in you know, a decreasing the probability so these are the kind of also the very cute ideas i'm looking all over the world what are the cute ideas coming for an example malaria combination jaipur this hospital so i think swai man singh hospital sms hospital they came up with a with an idea that um quinon quinine quinine and then mix with um, uh, swine flu and then hiv so three kind of uh, drugs if you mix together and give morning night morning night two times a day and then they have also uh, shared the data and then in australia they are now applying and then yesterday donald trump said that he is also going to apply it in in us so i think that this kind of thing this kind of uh, typical information i am also looking into and then trying to learn more about the the feature of this kind of uh, structures or the or the pandemic yeah. so uh, few things that i that i gather from what you just said one is uh, uh, going back to what dyson was saying i mean where we started our conversation that the next 50 years is going to belong to 
a different kind of approach towards biology and life form and understanding of it. And what you also mentioned is interestingly, uh, in 2011, when you when when it just you had a, had the serendipity of virus being all across the food chain and then human through their culture and movement throughout the globe are also uh, in some sense all across the food chain. Now, in fact, uh, in the morning before preparing for the interview, I was just, it, what was going in my mind was, there was an era of movement of goods globalization. So you had movement of you know goods moving from one place to another, uh, n largely non-perishable, I, uh, I, I would say. And then there was this movement of information, which was the information globalization. And for the last, I think, couple of decades, uh, there has been a sudden spike in terms of movement of natural people, in the sense movement of people, or movement of recipes or food from one country to another. And both of these uh, are going to put huge demand on scientists like you to now figure out, you know, whether this can be compatible, you know, whether these kind of things can travel or not travel to uh, different places. And this is what I think you're saying. Um, no, no, no. I mean, I am not against the versatility of cultures. So versatility of cultures is very fine. You can have your culture. But at this point of time, point of the time of the world, if you want to get connected to the world, you are not allowed to do whatever you want to do in any part of the world. So United Nations have to come up with something that would restrict every single country uh, following their habit, if that habit is dangerous to the entire entire humanity. Yeah. So you can't. Correct. So actually, it was the, the framing of the question was leading to the point that, that maybe we have entered into an era now, and which is what I think Dyson and you are saying, that we mm. need to now relook at what kind of ecosystems are getting formed, the new newer ecosystems are getting formed. And in some sense, we are in direct competition with virus in some sense. I, I, do, I don't want to use the word competition again, but I'm just saying that even viruses across the food chain and we are across the food chain. So we would definitely meet them and they would have yeah. their learning strategies of how to bind with our receptors and we would mm -hmm. need to come up with strategies mm -hmm. of how to overcome them. Um, one thing I would like to just correct, virus is not an intelligent system. It is a stupid, it was stupid, nothing is there. But the point is that molecules, they, they collide with each other um, uh, um, zillions of times. Boop, 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 boop. So trial and error process, uh, you may think that I am trying with one experiment, I am failing, I am trying with another. So basically month, day, hours. But for the virus, it tries uh, one second, 10 to the power 15, 16 times. So we are fighting with a system that can, that can make errors. It doesn't, it doesn't care because it has nothing to lose, basically. So so the point is that uh, these kind of life forms or these kind of uh, sub life forms, which are not living systems, um, I would say, uh, we cannot call virus living. It's kind of in midway between living and non-living. And uh, and uh, uh, antiviral antiviral uh, drugs are coming up, but antiviral uh, strategies uh, for the for the scientific community of the world need to be reframed. Especially, I am a little bit of panicked because of the multiple, multi-receptor, you know, right. ability of the, of, the, of the spike of the, of the virus. Uh, it, it, it actually changes the, my very understanding of molecular science. I'm working on molecular systems or molecular electronics or molecule-based uh, systems for 20 years. And uh, it's very difficult for me to digest that something like this have happened. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, textbooks need to be rewritten if coronavirus have, have really done this. Um, yeah. Um, so, 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 yeah, so yeah. Uh, uh, I, I take your point. In fact, I'm, I'm all for all oh. kinds of versatility because in some sense, diversity is also in a way helping us build our immune system because, you know, the more we prone, the more we prone to risk, the more we learn about mm. it and maybe we'll develop mm. strategies towards it. So totally with you yeah. on that. Um, yeah. I like the point that you mentioned that we need some kind of a global charter around it, uh, a global charter which which actually uh, spends a lot of time and research and keeps coming up with directives or advisories of you know certain things being high risk kind of lifestyle and certain hmm. things being low risk kind of a lifestyle and what can be globalized and what cannot be globalized. Yeah, 
absolutely uh, the 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 bottom line is don't mess with nature without knowing it so if you know it then you can modify it but you just you, you just go on messing around or un, uh, and uh, your knowledge is not clear then there is a difficulty and that I, yeah and in some sense i think this is a this is an interesting cast i'm just i'm just uh, correct me if i'm wrong we mess i mean i don't want to use the word mess but we try to go on a global growth trajectory as humanity and then we we have encountered these climate change issues which is again nature in some form and then we went through that and used a food culture movement of natural people and we are encountering another natural uh, change uh, which is coming back and haunting us so in some sense i think uh, i think it's it's time for some kind of a reflection and reset button for how we are yeah, how we are creating an ecosystem with the nature or symbiosis with the nature yeah, yeah. so two things i think uh, are very important one is the research of microbiome so you started in the beginning of this interview talking about microbiome the uh, what you said it was 10% of our cells are cell uh, that is actually 1% of our cells are cells and the 99% are actually micro no 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 we should not we should not um, extrapolate it in that way actually the microbiomes are very um, very small uh, uh, strains of life forms that are there in our mouths and guts and then back uh, so of course number wise and then versatility wise they are much more so they are scientific importance cannot be ruled out definitely in the evolution process uh, person to person interactions and their combined evolution mm. Mm. that process it helps a lot i mean darwin's uh, uh, theory of evolution i think is under un, is under a, under a huge stress because of this microbiome research and then microbiome research uh, we need to understand human to human inter interactions and at the same time human to animal interactions also i think i mean it's a wild guess people who are listening to this should not call me that um, I'm, I'm 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 doing this but i have the right to to do this but somehow i feel like you know uh, microbiome research without a uh, completion of the microbiome research it is very difficult to understand how virus is able to you know communicate through um uh, bat and human and then this um uh, different different animals because suppose i am eating goat and then goat eats uh, i mean and then uh, somehow goat eats something say i eat uh, say bat bat eats some other animal and then other animal eats other animal so it i will be in threat if the third level or fourth level in that food chain gets some very dangerous disease because it will evolve before we are coming so this kind of global map is essential so what so when the chain whoever is trying to do this catalog should be there this catalog doesn't exist so what you're saying is a food social network you know the, the food social network <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's food chain. It's called food chain. Yeah. In the pyramid, pyramid is actually made of many, many, many food chains also. Yeah. That that's that's what happened. I mean, when you were doing it, if you really, really Chinese people say that they will not leave without crocodile meat or the or the or the exotic different kind of animal meats or rare species meat, then we have to map that how could um, uh, evolution happen through this way this way that way or something like that so without understanding I mean, we have to understand this kind of thing and somehow i feel like this microbiome part needs to be needs to be understood that how um, when you go from one country to another country microbiome in your body changes totally how does that affect in your structural evolution process in your uh, cell receptors building in the in the in the conformation of different different kind of proteins because dna doesn't change much i mean you can see that um, 95% of dna of of, uh, of banana will match with yours i mean 99% of uh, chimpanzee will match yours most of the animals if you see genetically very very close very very close so not not at that level but microbiome level where the variation is very profound and we can do quantified studies is possible feasible and 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 reproducible significantly um i think that we need to get into that particular topic to understand also that how um, how the virus is behaving so differently in in different environments and then what are the actually we have to assess the threat coming threat much earlier you because you know that corona like thing where you do nothing 
you will become innocent, you become more friendly, and you create a devastation all over the world. So what virus has done, it has become more friendly. And that's that's causing the devastation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think what, uh, and you can, you, can, you can weigh in on this. I think when, uh, uh, if, if we look at the last 150 years, the, the money that has gone into research, I don't have the data, and I'm just speculating here, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think a lot of it went into fighting anticipated enemies or potential enemies. And obviously, you had a lot of research money going into it and applications around it. Do you now see an era, uh, this is the start of the era where we would get into heavy uh, spending on research around biological, um, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, assessment of threats and remedies? No, assessment of threats were always there. But I think that uh, um, in the era of globalization, if uh, if some countries destroy their their um, forests, then nobody uh, is left alone. Especially, I think that destruction of many many species because of temperature rising, because maybe natural evolution process, uh, it's not a good idea, because. Maybe you may think that uh, uh, those plankton, sea planktons, have not no in no way connected to me, but genetically and then uh, food chain wise, they are connected. Many many ways they are connected, and they they do a lot of lot of things. So, so I think that uh, this systemic approach, the systemic science, where always if you see the system science journals, uh, scientific journals, <laughs> the impact factor is very very low. Yeah. People <laughs> nobody, I mean, very few people publish there. Nobody, people, nobody is interested to see the uh, scale-free features of different different systems how they are connected. So this field actually, these fields I'm talking about doesn't exist. We need to we need to bring about these kind of research fields where mm, apparently uh, uh, uncorrelated uh, systems are actually connected in an integrated fashion and integrated manner. Yeah. In fact, in fact, what I'm what I'm also trying to pick up from what you're saying is, uh, if I just were to quote Peter Singer, uh, hmm. Peter Singer's whole idea of expanding the circle of sentiments, and while most of his ideas, if, if I understand it right, were around expanding circle of sentiments amongst humans, and then if you look at climate change or nature as an idea, biomimicry, nature as an idea, or nature's uh, symbiotic relationship with us as an idea, then you're expanding your relationship with there. Maybe there is a third layer which is around the food chain that you mentioned. We need to develop our circle of reflection and circle of sentiment with the food chain. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So basically, uh, um, all life forms are connected. I mean, again, I would like to stress on microbiomes and then other other things because uh, statistically they are so rich, so rich in information uh, exchange. Uh, Amount of information you exchange with uh, with your colleagues living together uh, is is via microbiome. Uh, it's. Um, I I would like to. Uh, we'll definitely carry on this conversation in another yeah. uh, episode. But I was <laughs> I am I'm, I'm very happy that a person like you because you were so energetic in the entire conversation with so much you know uh, uh, yeah. passion. I'm sure people yeah. like you are looking at this, and I'm I'm very. Uh, I, I leave this episode with a, with an optimistic note that people like you who are so passionate about the subject are going to definitely yeah. keep working at it and keep yeah, yeah just solutions. yeah just one request to the to the people whoever is watching this video anywhere in the world uh, uh, isolate yourself because this is a very very bad time we are passing through isolate yourself isolate means you touch some place and other person comes and touch that place it's it's a contamination. It's contamination. Where what you are touching, the other person should not touch. That's important. If if you are home quarantine and then you are uh, chatting with each other, that's not a quarantine. Home quarantine means no person touch each other thing. If you touch, you go and wash and then touch. So so these with this particular note, I would like to like to end that. Get yourself isolated, physically isolated. Part.